Hello everybody. Today I want to talk about a forgotten and underrated Roman hero, Gnaeus Petraeus, which exploits took place in the 1st century BC. We don't have any real detailed information about Gnaeus' childhood, other than he was born in Atina, a town in Latium, in a poor economical situation, for which reason he chose to pursue a career in the Roman army. He will soon distinguish himself for bravery, valor and foresight. For these reasons he was promoted to Primus Pilus, the leader of all the centurions, and the only one of them to have access to the war cabinet of a legion. This rank was a great honor since in order to achieve it, you had to earn your men trust, winning many successes and obtaining several merits in the field of battle. Pliny the Elder, our main source for this story, narrates that Petraeus received the very high honor of the crown of Grimenia, for having performed an act of heroism during the war against the Cimbri and Teutons. The first conflicts between Romans and the Germanic tribes occurred in 113 BC near Aquileia, when Cimbri and Teutons, nomadic populations originating from Jutland and Scania, abandoned Pannonia to enter Italy through the lands of the Taurisi of Noricum. These Celtic tribes, allied with Rome, asked for the help of the legions in Rome, as was its custom, promptly responded. Having positioned the army in the mountains, not far from Aquileia, the consul Gnaeus Papirius Carbon convinced the nomads, who in the meantime had understood the power of the Roman legions, to abandon the project and return to their homes, perhaps seeking the honors of a triumph, or to be sure that the agreements would be respected, Carbone followed them. Instead, the nomads, perhaps believing they were betrayed, attacked Carbone's troops. Only under the command of Gaius Marius were the two Germanic populations annihilated at the battles of Aquae Sextiae and Vercellae, thus saving Rome from barbaric invasion. During an expedition against the Cimbri, the legions had been advancing for some time in the Swiss forests, a terrain unsuitable for the Romans who could not run or move easily with armor, while the enemies, without armor, could lurk behind and above the trees making themselves untraceable. Petraeus spoke to the commander begging him to go back and not put everyone's lives at risk. He also pointed out that if they had not yet been attacked, it was because the enemies had set an ambush for them where the woods were thicker, and continuing forward was suicide. The commander, however, did not listen to him, probably due to personal grudges with the centurion who had tried to advise him more than once, but also because the soldiers seemed to appreciate Gnaeus more than their commander. Petraeus felt cornered. The punishment for those who rebelled was terrible, generally being beaten to death by his fellow soldiers, but he couldn't rebel by inciting his men. Because it would have caused a disarray that would have surely and quickly attracted the enemies. He quickly made his decision, that is, he unsheathed the gladius and thrust it deeply into the commander's chest. Then he called his subordinates and informed them that he was the new commander and to prepare for battle. The men didn't say a word convinced of his skill as much as of the ineptitude of the former commander. They immediately retreated and took up a battle position. Just in time because they immediately heard the war cries and it rained down like a hurricane on the Cimbrian warriors already stationed in the forest. Fighting and retreating, Gnaeus brought his men to the open field where he was finally able to give them the Roman battle structure and with this defeated his enemies. The legions acclaimed him because they recognized that they owed their lives to him alone. Once in Rome, Gnaeus returned to the Senate with much trepidation for his life. The laws of Rome were terrible for those who rebelled, thus committing treason. Furthermore, Gnaeus had murdered his superior, a nefarious example to be punished in an exemplary manner. In the trial that followed, all the soldiers without exception had words of praise for Praetorian and accusations of inadequacy for the commander. And here, although the Roman senators were very conservative and, moreover, Gnaeus was not an aristocrat, upon hearing the numerous exploits of Petraeus, highly appreciated not only by his men, but also by all his previous commanders. Not only did they not accuse Gnaeus, but they awarded him with the Corona Graminia. From then on, all of Rome applauded and praised Gnaeus for a long time, showering him with favors and gifts, also receiving applause and thanks from his gens for having brought fame and glory to his house. 